So a question that I was asked quite recently on this channel was, should I remap my diesel engine? So a lot of people are concerned about the wear and tear that a remap is going to do on their diesel engine. And they don't want to do something that's going to improve performance, but going to affect the car's reliability. So in this video, we're going to look at the question, should I remap my diesel? We're going to assume it's an older diesel engine. It's got a higher mileage. And we're going to look at some of the options open to you if you want a very conservative increase in power without affecting the reliability of your engine. So we all know that when you put more power through an engine, you are increasing the wear and tear. That's a simple fact of life. The harder something works, the quicker it degrades. And engines are certainly no different. But manufacturers have built in quite a big leeway in tolerances. So they're working on very, very conservative settings. And in the case of the modern turbo diesel or turbo petrol engine, there's usually a lot of scope there before you start affecting the car's long-term reliability. You can improve your chances of having a reliable car after a remap just by upping your service regimen using high quality oils and maybe shortening those service intervals because that will help offset any additional wear and tear that's happening on the car. So what are the typical areas that will start to fail in an older higher mileage engine when you remap it? Well often the pipework from the turbo is getting rather old and it may well have split or be leaking slightly. So as with most of the things we're going to discuss here we're talking about wear and tear that you're going to have to deal with at some point in the future but because your car is old you're totally getting away with it at the moment. So it might be a case of just replacing some of the joins in the pipework or some of the pipework between the turbo and the intake and the engine itself. So another area to look at is the actual clutch in the car. So if the mileage is getting up, chances are you're probably due to get the clutch done anyway. So adding a remap, if the clutch starts to go after a remap, that clutch was pretty much on its last legs anyway. So you can test your clutch. So there's a number of different ways of testing the clutch. Um, you might try and pull away in third gear and the engine should stall. If the engine doesn't stall, that might indicate that the clutch is starting to slip a little. Or just moving the car into first gear and lifting the clutch fairly swiftly. If you change gear, and the RPMs are substantially different and you notice the engine speed of the car dipping or rising and the corresponding speed in the car not changing, that can also indicate a slipping clutch. So there's a few little tests that you can do just to make sure that your clutch is in top condition. And in a lot of clutches, you get a feel for how high the biting point is. So that might indicate if the clutch is on its way out. Um, but it's harder to do with a lot of modern clutches that have got adjuster mechanisms. Um, but generally, if that biting point is quite high or it's starting to crunch in first gear or second gear, that could indicate that the lifespan of the clutch is pretty much up. Sometimes engine sensors start to play up. And again, this is a wear and tear thing. So a remap will highlight the problem that is already there. But in most cases, you can totally get away with remapping an older car if you have a more conservative hike in power. So we start to talk about economy remaps. So this is a remap that's been designed to improve the efficiency and the economy that you get from your engine rather than just upping the power that you would expect that engine to produce. So in most cases, you will still get a really nice bump in power, but you'll get improved fuel economy and the wear and tear on the engine will be minimally different to what it would be without any kind of remap that's done. So if you speak to your remapper or your tuner, you can express your concerns as well. So the biggest problem area that we see with most remaps is the turbo comes on too quickly down the RPM range and you really do need a cool down zone for the turbo to operate in um, just to maximize its lifespan. So if you start pushing the turbo too hard at too low an RPM, you can degrade the quality of the turbo over the long term. But a remapper with experience or a good quality company will have already taken that into account. They certainly don't want a reputation of pushing out maps that cause problems in cars. So thinking about the remap itself, it's generally two, three, four hundred, whatever your local currency is. So it's not a massive cost to pay for a significant increase in power, improves your drivability, and in a lot of cases you get better fuel economy. So assuming you had that done and you were experiencing problems, 
you can have it quite easily removed again. So it's a software mod that can be put on and taken off. So that's a worst case scenario, having the remap actually removed. But there's some other things that are options that you might want to consider. You've got various tuning boxes. Now be very careful with tuning boxes. Some of them are literally just dumping more fuel in. It's a little resistor in a case. And I would shy away from any of those devices. You see them all over auction sites and a lot of companies are selling them branded as high tech ones. You're actually looking for one that acts like a piggyback ECU. So I've used a unit from TDI tuning to great effect. And I've been quite impressed with that. The benefit of this is that you can just plug it into the engine. It's a 15, 20 minute job if you have no experience whatsoever with cars. If you've got a little bit of experience and the right tools, which generally is just a screwdriver and a pair of pliers, um, you can get the job done even more quickly than that. And the good boxes have got a range of options that allow you to choose a tune. So you might deliberately set it at the more economical settings, or you might go for a performance map. But again, you've got something to play with there. You can stick it in the economical mode and just see if you're experiencing any of the typical problems like your clutch starting to slip or some of the sensors starting to play up, causing flat spots and rough running. But I would definitely recommend you consider a remap. There's so many different options out there. Don't just go for the highest performance you can if you are concerned about reliability and you've not got a lot of confidence in your engine because it's old or the mileage is starting to creep up. But you can really see great benefits from having a remap done on most modern turbo engines. So thanks for watching. If, if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.